What is up guys, this is Wim and in this video we're gonna take a look on how to create this track in the style of Agents of Time. Now before we jump into Ableton, I want to take a look at the key features of the sound of Agents of Time. Now pretty much all of the Agents of Time track have a very nice and punchy kick and also the low end, very strong bass line which is very prominent in the track. If we take a closer look to the drums, we see something very interesting because most of the drums are actually not spread out very much into the stereo field. If you take a closer listen, you will see that pretty much all of the drums are more in the mid zone and they are doing this because they want to leave some room for the synth sounds. And that is mostly a very interesting arpeggiator which is just very nicely in the stereo field. Now with that in mind, let's jump straight into Ableton and have a look at the kick and bass. Now for the kick to get the usual sound, I just sampled it again of one of the tracks. But let's just go on with the bass over here. So for the bass line you can already see we have quite some processing. Let's turn it off for now and let's have a look at the diva patch. So as you can see I started off with one of my presets over here, which are free to download for all my Patreon supporters. And then I tweaked it a little bit. Now in most melodic techno tracks the bass line usually consists of mostly a saw wave. Sometimes of course we can use something like a sine wave to get a little bit more subbiness into your mix. But this time really the game changer is here to enable the square wave. And as you can see we have only mixed in this oscillator 2 here. But the cross mod is actually having a very interesting effect here. But we are not messing around with the pitch too much because we have it in the sync mode over here. Very important if we turn this off it sounds absolutely crazy and definitely not like a bass line and let's see what this cross mod is doing. Now that sounds very basic and here we get a very nice and fat sounding bass line. Let's try to enable the saw wave instead. But with this one we're getting a way more interesting feeling over here. Now another very important factor here to get this very fat sounding bass line is of course the feedback again. I mentioned this already in a couple of tutorials. This time we actually turn it all the way up. Let's have a look at the effect of this. So this just sounds way thinner. But you can always play around with this. Sometimes you don't really need to use it or just a little bit. This time I turn it up all the way. The best way to figure this out is of course to play it together with your kick and then just tweak it on the go. This time we have also a little bit velocity on the filter applied. We have some resonance and also some envelope over here. But over here there's nothing crazy about this patch. Let's have a look first at the pattern that we have here. As you can see we're making use of the velocity changes on the filter here which just makes this pattern sound way more interesting. Let's see how that sounds with the kick together. Already sounds quite nice, but let's have a look what kind of effects we applied here. Of course, you will see this a lot in my tutorials. 
We have first um, the echo boy to give a little bit more bounce. Delay is usually always a good way to fill in those empty spots sometimes when we're not playing the bass. If you want to have a very dynamic and forward driving bass, it's good to fill those empty spots. Of course, not all the way up here and um, we're always taking out a little bit of the low end because this one also, of course, spreads a little bit into the stereo field. So we don't want to have too much sub in the echo boy. But um, other than that, it's pretty basic. You could, of course, also use the Ableton delay or something else. Then, as always, you will see me use this decapitator distortion, which is really helps getting this really nice and analog vibe. This time, actually, maybe the first time ever, I used the P mode. Um, yeah, I don't know why, to be honest. I just played around probably. And this is the one that I wanted to stick with. So as I said, again, guys, play this in the mix and just play around a little bit and then you will find the sweet spot. Let's check the effect of this. So you can see very nicely how we are filling in those gaps here. Here we're taking out a little bit of the width again of the delay. We want to leave some room for the other elements and we're going to do the same later on with the drums because we have this really nice and wide arpeggiators, but I will show you this later. Now we have one of my favorite compressors, as always, from Analog Obsession. The link is in the description for this, and you can get this for free on their Patreon site. So this one is also improving the groove slightly. And if you take a closer listen to the Agents of Time track, we also see very often very compressed sounds. Now, of course, this is also part of the mastering, but it's always a good decision to already get there during the mixing stage. Now we're getting rid of the sub frequencies over here. We already have quite a punchy kick, which is punching quite a lot in the sub frequencies here. So we don't need them necessarily in the bass. And this is actually a mistake most of the beginners do. They leave a lot of sub frequencies in the bass. Of course, this is a nice idea if you want to have a very deep sounding track. But here we have a very nice punchy bass line, which is spreading widely out in the higher frequencies here because we want to have it very prominent in the track. But if you have this, it's on the other hand, a very nice idea to just get rid of those super low frequencies below 80 hertz. And as you can see, we have another crazy equalizer here. So we're actually pushing the bass a little bit more in the background by getting rid of some higher frequencies over here. Now over here, we just have a little volume automation. You can see we are lowering the volume down here in the brag, which is very important. Of course, we could also cut the bass away here completely, but sometimes it's just leaving a huge gap for the break and, and it's just a better way to fade it out over the time and especially in front of the drop we want to hear almost nothing because we're going to get this nice and punchy bass here coming in again. Now before we get to the drums, let's have a look at the group processing here. Now you might know that I really like to use this compressor on the bass. I have my own preset here and usually I just tweak a little bit of the input. Yeah, from my experience, in 90% of the tracks, it's actually always a good idea to add a little bit of compression, especially with this compressor from Aturia. It's just gluing the kick and the bass a little bit together and it's just making everything a little bit more tight. So let's see what effect this is having. And of course, if we are doing this, we're sometimes using a little bit of the punch of the kick. So sometimes I just take it down here a little bit to 70-80%. As always, guys, just play your track and then do the adjustment while going. Now for the last stage, this is also something I really like to use. This equalizer is called Rare, again from Analog Obsession. And this is actually an emulation from a real world analog equalizer, which looks pretty much the same. Now there are at least 10 emulations of this plugin, but this one, of course, you can get very cheap and it's very effective. Um, you just have some very simple tweaking options here. So this area here is completely for the low end and you can see the frequency over here. So those bands mostly having effect at 30 hertz at the moment. Of course, this is spreading out a little bit more to the other frequencies here because we have a very smooth and nice equalizer curve. And on the other side here, you actually have some more controls over the higher frequencies. But uh, for the bass, usually I only use this one. Sometimes if your kick is lacking a little bit of this high punch, of course, you can just boost a little bit. And this other knob here over here, this is more uh, for cutting away the frequencies at the same time. And this is a very interesting effect because most of the time how you use this equalizer is boosting a little bit and at the same way um, also cutting a little bit way of the frequencies because this equalizer has such an interesting curve in it. It just makes the sound really nice. But I don't want to go too much in the details here. Let's just see how this affects our sound. So 
it's giving some really nice punch in the lower frequencies here. Most of the time I use it in between those two, but for this track we already had some nice punch around those areas and just adding a little bit more of the very subby frequencies worked perfect here. Now let's have a look at the drum sounds. First of all we have a clap sound which sounds like this. So you can already hear there's quite some interesting stuff going on. First of all, we have a simple equalizer. I most of the time do this on all my drums pretty much, only if I want to have some very low toms, I don't cut away the low end. On the heads I go even crazier most of the time. Just get rid of those frequencies you don't really hear anyways because you want to keep your mix nice and clean. This clap sounded really dry and short, so I added a nice reverb over here. And then we actually have another Ableton reverb over here, and this is very interesting. We're having some crazy automations here. It's this one over here is going up to 55 right in front of the clap. And that way we're getting this very nice reverse sound right in front of the second clap. How it works, this reverb is still on and it's getting the reverb from the first clap. But it's turned to zero so you don't actually hear it. And then it's just coming right in front of the second clap. I hope you can hear it. And then we have another automation here. I wanted to make this clap pattern a little bit more interesting. So I added another clap hit over here, which is turned down a little bit. But we're using the sand reverbs here, which I do very often. Just a very quick and effective way to get a more interesting groove. So the first one is this big call reverb, which I use for most of the synth sounds. I'm using the Valhalla Vintage Reverb here with a 5 seconds decay, so quite a big sound. And uh, usually I also like to use my echo preset here, which I have loaded up in every single project I start. And uh, maybe you already know that I like to use a little bit of resonance. You just push this up a little bit over here. And I also like to filter out a little bit of the high frequencies. So that way we get this very nice clap sound, which is going on here a little bit in the background because we have the feedback here quite far up at 70% and um, what I also really like to use is the reverb mode over here you have to turn the decay up a little bit more to get this very nice and big sound and let's just play that so let's just solo the echo here real quick so it's not too loud but it definitely helps with getting the groove a little bit more interesting but uh, let's just go on with the next sound here this time we actually have a drum rack with two different head sounds. Now first I turn this open hi-hat here off. And then uh, this one is playing actually first alone. Short and punchy head sound. We actually don't have any processing going on here, just a little bit randomization on the velocity. So this first head sound is coming in like this. And then we actually add this other big open hi-hat and it sounds like this. So a bit more of a classic old school techno hat, but it works really nice, this groove, especially at the beginning. With another sound that we are adding later is this white noise hat here. So those two hi-hats are actually playing a little bit together. And for this sound, I actually used one of my presets. This one is actually part of the free pack that I just launched. If you haven't grabbed that yet, just make sure to do that because we have some really nice sounds going on here. We're also adding a little bit of velocity so we can play around with the cutoff. And as I explained already in other tutorials, we have the sustain here all the way up. So you can get really creative here in those uh, MIDI patterns and just have a little bit of a longer hit here and do those um, crazy stutter sounds. And as you can see, we're actually not playing around with the velocity here. I think I just checked the Agents of Time track and they have a similar sound, which is also pretty much stable in the velocity, so I left it there. Let's have a look at the other sounds here. We just have a little percussion loop where we are just adding a little bit of sand reverb. Now the second one is always also Valhalla Vintage Verb. Then uh, we will edit a 16th hi-hat, which is not too loud, but it's definitely adding a little bit more drive right in front of the break here. So you can see without it, we're having quite a lot of space here and we're gonna fill it up with a simple 16 high end, which is helps pushing the track forward a little bit. Now then we actually have here a bit more of an effect sound. This is just a cymbal hit. But I heard exactly this pattern here in one of the Agents of Time's track where they just play this big cymbal crash over and over again. 
and I played around here a little bit with the auto pan but uh, you can see and also with the white noise sometimes it's a good idea you can see I actually ended up not using this because I think I, it sounded actually quite good on its own and I just did a little bit of an automation here with the volume so those crashes just get louder and louder in front of the drop. Now on top of that we have a simple snare build up which always helps to just drive the tension a little bit more right in front of your drop and I usually like to make a simple pattern like this. And then later on we go into full 16th mode. And as always I add quite some sand reverb over here and also filter out the low frequencies. You could also add in delay, but I think we already had quite a lot of elements in the track so it's nice to just keep it simple sometimes. Now let's have a look at another very important stage of the drums, which is again the group processing. Most of the time my effects on the group processing look exactly like this. I have a compressor then sometimes I add a little bit more distortion to really get this nice and fat analog sound. You guys have seen this already in a lot of other tutorials. So let's just have a look here real quick. The decapitator in the A mode and uh, this time I didn't use the tone too much. Usually I turn it up a bit but I think the drums already had quite a lot of high end so it was enough for me. And this time as I said in the intro we're narrowing the sound here down a little bit even though we didn't even push the sounds into the stereo field here a lot. You can see this is centered, this is centered, the higher is just 3% on the right but of course well, some of those sounds are already stereo by itself and as I told you agents of times usually have quite narrow drums so we don't want to steal too much of the width here for the arpeggiator sounds that we use later. So let's have a look at the synth sounds. Now first of all I really like to use an atmospheric sound. This is also always a good way to just start your track when you don't have an idea yet. Just start with some note, maybe the key of your kick and that you can get you started really quickly. Of course we don't have much melodic content going on here but I came up with quite an interesting patch. As you can see I started out again with one of my presets here. Crazy high resonance um, but the interesting part is happening over here. We have some cross modulation and also the ring modulation turned on. And we're using a lot of FM modulation on the cutoff filter here. Let's see how it sounds. So you can see it seems like the cutoff filter is moving up and down here but we actually don't have any automation. This is just happening because we are using those crazy modulation techniques over here. Let's turn this off. Sounds way more boring but if we turn this on here we get some crazy modulations going on. Those are very unpredictable and this is a good way of creating some modular type and analog sounding background noises. Now of those atmospheric sounds I really like to push this reverb quite far up. So this is already spreading out quite far in the stereo field and uh, even if you don't have any melodic content at the beginning going into your track you're not leaving too much empty space so the track is not sounding too dry. Yeah and this is just a very nice way to fill up your track a little bit. Now we have two interesting arpeggiator sounds over here. The first one is a bit more of a stable sound, it sounds like this, without the effects. So you can see we're not changing too much over here, we, I think we just have the same effects pretty much applied, decapitated distortion and some delay of course. Then we're just using a little bit of equalizer to cut away those unnecessary frequencies. And of course one of my favorite plugins, the Fetish Compressor, because the Diva actually gets way louder if you turn up the cutoff frequency. So I like to use the compressor to just keep that arpeggiator sound a little bit more at a constant volume level. But let's just have a look at the preset here. I started out again with one of my presets. This is also available in my free pack over here with 15 high quality presets. Now if you want to get a little bit more, I actually created a big preset pack with 57 nice presets. If you haven't seen that video, I will just leave the link in the description. But yeah, I took this preset and I think I modified it quite a lot to make it more of an arpeggiator sound, having a little bit of an attack envelope over here. And uh, yeah, just played around a little bit with the oscillators, which at the end sounds like this. Big reverb over here in the break and then going down. 
Now also, if I take the synth sounds out right in front of the drop, I really like to use the send reverb also from the echo, because otherwise you can see it just stopping pretty abruptly. But this echo delay just has this nice reverb over here and is perfect for using it in this way. Now let's have a look at the second arpeggiator sound, which sounds a little bit more interesting. Now the way I did this, I actually started out with the first one here and just created this basic melody. You can see this is really nothing crazy going on here. And I just duplicated it and tried to find another more interesting sound. And I also used pretty much the same melody. I just tweaked it a little bit. As you can see on this one, we have two gaps over here. So you can see here we're having space for six 16th notes. And here you can see this pattern is looping after four already. So those two in combination always end up sounding very interesting because this one has a different length. And this one is also a bit more of an unstable sound. This one sounds way more interesting, but it's also very unstable because we have uh, some crazy automations here on the cutoff filter here, I think from some LFO. We're having uh, quite some auto pan going on and a little bit of delay. Then we just have some equalization and uh, another delay over here. Now the reason why I have those two arpeggiator sounds together is because if you only have one of them, it would be a way more boring track. Because if you choose to have a bit more of a stable sound, which is not changing crazy in the frequencies and everything, your track is not so interesting because it just stays the same and the sound is not moving a lot. Of course, we're moving the cutoff filter here a little bit. But uh, overall, this arpeggiator sound stays the same throughout the whole track. And if we would take the other decision and play this arpeggiator in solo mode, this arp sound is actually a little bit too unstable for the track. Sometimes this arpeggiator sound is just completely disappearing because of those crazy automations on the cutoff filter and also the, the analog texture of the CS80. So it would be just a bit weird in the track if sometimes the arpeggiator is absolutely gone and then it's very loud again. So if we combine those two, they are actually working together because this is adding the interest and this one is adding the stability to the track. And very often if you take actually two arpeggiators and play them in the whole track, they kind of melt together and sometimes you don't even know that it's two happening. So let's see how they sound together. Now, of course, for this example, this is quite obvious that we have two different sounds here, but I think it's not a bad thing. It's just so adding way more interest. And we actually also have some very interesting automations here. This time, I just took one of my presets here and uh, I played around a little bit with those glide settings. Now, if you put this to zero, It also sounds very nice, but definitely less interesting. And we are missing a little bit of this detuned melodic techno vibe. So I came up with this automation. If we turn this glide up already like this, we're already having some really nice effect, especially we, because we have quite some dynamic range in between the notes here. You can see this is already two octaves lower than this note. So they are constantly pitching up and down this glide over here. And what is happening if we push this glide up even longer, you can see the glide time is going up over here to almost half a second. So of course those notes are very short. So the glide actually has no chance to just go all the way up here in this short amount of time. So what is actually happening is that we are just detuning the sound because it's trying to get to this note, but the glide is actually way too long. So let's uh, just see how that sounds. And now, of course, if you have this all the way up here to through the whole track, you will lose completely the melodic context to your track. So it's just sometimes a nice thing to add a little bit more interesting and this analog crazy modular feeling. Let's just have one more look how this sounds in the track. Now, some people might like this and some won't, but I think if you have some other melodic context in the background, which is keeping your track a little bit more stable, it's sometimes a nice addition to your track. Let's have a look at the next sound. We actually used another one of my presets here. I used this arpeggiator sound here, but turned off the art mode actually, because I wanted to come up with my own melody, of course. This sound is also getting quite interesting because there are some cross modulation over here. 
really one of my favorite features to play around with in the Diva. Then we just have some very basic adjustments, just the ping pong delay. And of course, we're doing some equalizing here, quite crazy this time. We don't want to have the high frequencies in here either, because we already have many other elements here. And for this one, I played a little bit more around with the melody. So let's just have a look how that sounds. Now you can see for this sound we're using again the glide mode which is also very important. Just slightly turned up here but it has quite a drastic effect. Let's turn it down first. One more time with it. So it's actually quite subtle but because of that I actually added some very high notes. So always when you have some glide applied the more dynamic range is between your notes also the more prominent the glide will be because of course this glide has to come all the way from here to here. And I'm actually only using this at the beginning of the track here and also at the end. This note at the end has a very nice effect. Let's have a look how it sounds in the break here. And now in the context of the track. So you can see we're adding this note perfectly on the hit where everything else is falling out. So this is just a very nice way of getting some extra interest right in front of a new bar. But let's go on to the last sound of this track. For this one we have a little bit more effects going on here. Let's group this real quick. And we're gonna turn it off for now. Start off again with one of my presets here. Let's play that here. So guys, I hope you could hear that the cross modulation is giving you this insane and very nice detune feeling. I really encourage you to play around with this a little bit. Sometimes you have to tweak a little bit to find the sweet spot because of course the higher you turn this up, the more detune the sound gets. Of course you can use the sync mode over here to help out with that, but this is going to change the texture of your sound. So sometimes when I want to turn this up a little bit more and I like the sound over here for example, but it's completely detuned, I actually go into the fine tuning here and just play for example a simple C note and for that it's very nice to use this tuner effect and you can just see if it's in tune you can see we're here quite good in the tune so we don't need to tweak it too much but yeah you can do your adjustments over here let's have a look at the effects we're doing quite some crazy equalization but we are also automating this so we want to move the sound here just gently in the background and um, cut away most of the high frequencies and then the break usually where you build up the tension is always a good idea to to just add those nice and high frequencies now the sound of course has also a lot of movement so it's a nice way to add some reverb to just kind of smooth it out a little bit then we can have again this compressor over here to just help with the dynamic range and then uh, we're having a little bit of auto pen again and that is basically it for this template or one more thing actually of course on the master channel we have added my mastering rack here if you haven't seen it yet this is also free to download and the link will be in the description and this is finally it for this track i hope you learned something but guys please stick with me for one more minute i just wanted to let you know that i finally finished working on our discord channel and you can join absolutely for free now this is a community where we are focused on pushing your melodic techno productions to the next level. We want to discuss our new plugins and possible collaboration between each other and also of course giving feedback to each other tracks. So I hope you learned something and of course I see you in the next one.